In this video, I'm going to show how to visually change this day version of this game to a night version. So let's go to our scenes. And here we have this sample scene. I'm going to duplicate it. So we have a day version saved. And let's just call it day. So let's reload. And this is going to be our night. So let's open up the night version. And I have an image here that I'm going to use for the background. It is one of the renders that I did back in the day. And let's switch it to Sprite 2D and UI so we can use it inside of our game and just add it to the scene. So it's up here close to our tractor and I want it to be moved further away. This image that I have works perfectly for the type of game I'm making here. I can scale it up now once it's far back. So change that to get it working like we want. The original render actually has a river there, but we can just place a road here and that will work for us as well. And now for the ground, I want to scale it in the X direction as well. So it's going to cover the horizon level. Now that we have the background and our ground, we can play around with the light to make it so it's going to match the darkness of the background. And let's go to our directional light and I want to change our rotation of our directional light. So currently the directional light is actually not going from the center. So we want to change our Y to be zero. So it's going to match with the sun that I have in the background. And then I want to rotate it towards a sunset, something that is closer to the direction that we have here. At the lower that I move the sun, you can see that the scene is actually getting dimmer and we're getting those shadows dropped from the tractor. We still have this hard line that is separating the background from our ground. And because I'm using a night scene, it's actually pretty easy to blend it with that black background of those trees. So what we can do is go to window, render and select lighting. And in lighting, we can go to the environment. And at the bottom, we have the other settings. Fog is what we're looking for. And that can create that blend that we're looking for. So the default color is gray, but if we select the black one, we can increase the density and make it transition with a gradient. So something like that. Now you can also adjust the intensity of the light if you want to make it darker. And let's try out and see how that looks with the trees. So hit play. So that's how it looks with the trees. We are moving towards the background. So what we want to do is move the background that we created. So I will rename this to BG background and move it to the main camera. So it's going to be attached to the camera. That way we'll never reach that background. And th because the background is pretty close, you can actually see the trees appearing when they're going through that sprite that we have for the background. So we can move the background further and scale it up so that we can't see that line when the trees are appearing. Now we can also go inside here. Let's unpack our tractor. And we can add some lights for our tractor. So we're looking for a spotlight. And that will be for our tractor to have headlights. So let's go to the tractor and position them where we want them to be. So this is about the position of the headlights we have. And let's look at the height. So the headlights are actually somewhere here. And we can duplicate this light, move it on the other side, select both of them. And now we can increase the intensity for us to see the effect that we get from this light. Higher intensity, the brighter we will see that light. Let's set it to 100. And then there is also a control for the angle. So we can make those spotlights wider. So I'm probably going to leave it around 50 degrees. And the range will control how far the light is traveling. I think somewhere around 16 is going to work. 
Now we can also change the direction where the light is shining. So let's rotate on the Y axis. I want them to shine a little bit to the side so it's not straight forward. So 10 degrees looks about right. The other side needs to be the opposite. So here is our light. And you can also change the X rotation if you want, but it looks fine from this angle. So let's click play and see how it looks with the trees. Also, if you want to add some warmth in the sunlight that we get, we can increase the temperature and get a little bit warmer color. Now, if you want a complete dark scene, so you wouldn't light up this green area as well, you can change that by going into window, rendering lights, under your environment, you have this environment lighting. So currently it's set to skybox. And this is how the skybox looks. So it uses that light to light up the scene as well. And you can control the intensity of it. So if you want it a little bit darker, you can make it darker. If you want it completely dark, you can set it to zero. But if you just want it a little bit darker, you can adjust this value. Or if you want to use a gradient or a solid ambient color, you also have those options there. So I'm going to make it darker and actually increase the intensity of our sun so that I'll have shadows from our sun. So here is the night mode and the trees from the previous part. We have set them to be spawned from 4.5 to 4.5 on the sides so we can go to our script and expose those values that we had so x range is the one that i'm looking for so that's one of the values that we want to change and also the z range minimum and maximum since we're going to have a wider range where we can place it in the x we probably want to decrease the z range as well so expose those values and now for this night scene we can actually modify them to make it look better for the setup that we have here so I'm going to increase it to, let's say, 10. And for the Z max, we're going to do 6. And for the minimum, let's do 2. That will increase the amount of trees we spawn per Z. So you can see that there's more trees, but we're also covering a wider range as well. So this one is just a quick part to show you guys how I have achieved that uh, kind of a scene setup that I showed in the previous video. And in the next part, we're going to continue writing the logic for this game. So see you in the next one.